In this video, I'm going over all of the expensive first apartment furniture pieces I bought and where I was able to buy them on a budget. So we're talking the expensive things like couches, nightstands, bed frames, bar stools, you know, the things that actually cost a significant amount of money. I am going to try to make this video as helpful for you as possible and what I would have liked to watch when I was moving into my first apartment. So I'm gonna give you exact numbers on what I spent on all of my big pieces, where I got them, where I was able to find the best deals, just the things that will help you prepare the most for your own first apartment. I'm Sophia Lee. I'm a recent college graduate who is obsessed with turning her first apartment into a home. I'm taking you along with me and showing you my best decorating ideas, organization tips, and cleaning hacks so that you can make your apartment look Pinterest perfect while sticking to a budget. I'm here to help you turn your apartment into a place you will love. Before we begin, I realize that there is varying levels of what is considered inexpensive and what is not. Every single thing that I bought in my apartment fit within my budget, but I'm also not naive enough to think that you couldn't have found these things cheaper. And like for a lot of the big items that we're going over, you can find a ton of them at inexpensive places like Goodwill or other thrift stores to save you a lot of money. And what I personally did was I created an Excel first apartment budget sheet for myself that listed out every single thing I needed with the exact amount so I knew completely and exactly what I was spending and if I could afford it or not. And I was actually able to upload that to my website so that you guys can download it for your own first apartment. And the link to that Excel sheet is in my description box. First off, we have the beds. And I have two bedrooms in my apartment, so I needed two beds. And I have my master bedroom, which is my bed right here. And then I have a guest room, which I had to buy another bed as well, hence the two, <laughs> hence the two beds. So I had two criterias that I wanted when I was buying these beds. And the first one was that I wanted a really tall headboard because that, it, that looks just more extensive. And then I also wanted to have the foot rails attached to the headboard. Um, I just did not want to have to deal with a bed skirt. I've had a bed skirt for the last four years and it just can get painful. So if you are looking to save money though, you could just buy the headboard and then get a bed skirt and that is just simply cheaper. I just wanted to have the headboard attached to the foot rails because it looks more expensive, which makes sense because it is more expensive. My guest bed was from Walmart and it cost me $177.87 with tax included, which is an insane deal. And so I actually bought this a year before I moved into my apartment and left it in my parents' garage for that entire year because I knew I wasn't gonna be able to find anything that looked like that and was that inexpensive. So I like this bed for three reasons. The price, duh, like you literally won't be able to find anything much cheaper than that. It had the foot rails, which made that price even more shocking. And it had the, the tall headboard, which I measured it and it's 54 inches. So if you're looking at headboards, that's what a 54 inch headboard looks like in comparison to the floor. So I love, well, okay, to be honest, one, I like forgot what it looked like kind of because I bought it so far in advance for moving in. And at first I was like, do I like it? Do I not like it? But now that I'm starting to add some more decor kind of to that room, that room I really haven't touched at all, um, I do like it. And just, I know I'm like a broken record, but if you can find a bed that has the foot rails and has that tall of a headboard and looks like that for $177, you are majorly in luck and you should buy it. <laughs> My master bedroom headboard looks like this and I loved this bed when I found it. It had the footboards, it had the tall headboard, and it was really inexpensive compared to how expensive it looked. So I got this bed from Macy's for the total price of $420.29. Now, if you've been looking at beds, you know that that really is not a bad price for a bed at all. It's actually pretty inexpensive. However, I thought that I was getting this bed for $2.99. 
So that leads me to telling you two things that you need to know about this bed if you are buying it. The first thing is that this bed is always on sale. So never, ever, ever buy it for full price. It's always 50% off and around $299. The second thing you need to know is that when you're checking out and you've almost purchased this, Macy's tax on an $100 delivery fee that you have to pay for. Obviously the bad thing about that is the price and that you have to pay for it, but the good thing about it is is that you have two delivery men or women come and completely set it up at your home so you do not even have to lift a finger. I also recommend checking out Wayfair for beds and I actually almost bought a few beds that I was going to put in my apartment from there. It has so many options and you can put different prices, different colors, etc. to really get exactly what you want. Up next we have my bar stools and I'm <laughs> getting a leg workout coming down crotch like this. But the bar stools was definitely something that I was surprised cost so much money. Um, especially because I wanted, <laughs> looks like my arm's breaking, especially because I wanted one that had a back to them. So I could not find any bar stools that I liked for under $120 for one bar stool and I needed four bar stools at least which would have been way over $400 and I just was not about to spend that much money. So I found these from Target and I got them for $120 for a set of two of them. So that was $60 each for both of these which is an amazing price for bar stools um, and they also come in white if you would be interested in that. They are metal and so obviously like, well they have the back so that makes it super comfortable but even though they're metal and you wouldn't really think that they're that comfortable, I think that they're completely fine and you just, you can't beat the price of that. So, highly recommend these. I also recommend looking at overstock.com. They have a lot of different bar stools and they are really cute options. Next up we have my couch. and. I had very specific criteria for this couch. I wanted it to be white, which don't judge. I felt like it was the only time in my life that I could have a white couch without kids getting things all over it. Two, I wanted to have squared edges. And three, I wanted it to be a sectional of some sort so I could put my feet up while I was watching TV. And after researching, I realized that it was nearly impossible to find a couch that didn't cost me my arm and leg and I spent hours searching like I swear I looked at every single sectional that ever existed on the internet so then my boyfriend and I decided that we would split the cost of the couch which allowed me to kind of broaden my horizons a little bit and we were able to find this couch from Ashley's and we got it for around 1300 ish dollars. I actually don't know the exact price of it um, because I bought it in person at like Ashley's furniture store and I did not buy it online which is why I'm finding all these prices because I'm going back to my email and like getting my confirmation. But um, anyways we love this couch. We think it's one of the best couches or one of the best purchases we've ever made. Like literally I bet if I FaceTimed him he, and I asked him what's the best purchase you ever ever made he would say this couch. So is $1,300 expensive for a couch? Absolutely yes. Do I think that $1,300 is expensive for this couch or that it's like too much money for this couch? No. I think that this is worth the money and even I'm telling you if you go to Wayfair and you look it's very hard to find an inexpensive couch. So something that you should know about this is that they have this online on ashleys.com. I'll have it linked. However, they always have sales. So I think we got this couch for like 60% off. So online it'll probably say that it's like $2,300, $2,400 but if you go in store or you can call them up and see if they're doing any deals. Almost always this couch is like on a major, major sale. So if you're looking to spend less money on a couch, which I was too in the beginning, um, my friend Taylor is actually moving into her first apartment as well and she just ordered this couch from Wayfair. So this one was around, well you can see the price right here, but 
from my memory. I think it was around $600. And she cannot vouch for the quality or for the comfortable of, comfortableness of it yet because she does not have it. But it's really cute and it's about half a price of what I spent. So that is also a really great option for your first apartment. Lastly, where I was able to find inexpensive nightstands. So this was another thing that I was really specific on, which can you tell my brain works now? I literally overthink everything. But I was looking at designers that I love and I was looking at their bedroom pictures and I kept noticing one thing and that's that they all had large nightstands. So then of course, I wanted a large nightstand in my bedroom and I was buying two of them and I could not find inexpensive ones for the life of me. They were all so expensive. So I widened my search and that led me to these bad boys which are from Walmart and I got them for $150 and they're actually baby changing tables. So I had talked about these nightstands so much on my YouTube and my blog because I just think that they're such a good find. Um, but they were just so inexpensive. 150 for a nightstand this size is like extremely, it's such a good price. I think when I slammed my hand down these, uh, my flowers started breaking off. But um, another reason that I like these large nightstands is because they give me extra storage for my things and you can kind of tell in some ways that this is more of an inexpensive furniture piece like the drawers don't open the smoothest I also overstuff my drawers so here's my pajama door um, but overall like for the price of this these are amazing and they're perfect for my first apartment that wraps up this video where I showed you where I got all of my first apartment big furniture pieces and like I said earlier in the video, you obviously can get a lot of these items for cheaper, but you can spend a lot more on these items too. So I hope this video just helped you prepare a little bit more for your own first apartment. For more first apartment tips, apartment decor, organization, and more, follow me at Lee on Instagram and subscribe to my channel.